So does this accessory give your iPad more of a laptop feel? Well, it certainly does have more ports than the MacBook Air. I'll see you in there. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yeah, today what we're gonna be doing is getting back into iPad territory, talking about an accessory that really offers a lot more functionality for your iPad, getting it closer to that laptop. However, here's the thing. We're gonna allow each other to make our own choices here. So what I mean by that is that there are plenty of videos that are out there that talk about iPads and tablets being a laptop replacement. However, I know the argument, a good argument that can be made that's based on the storage offerings of the current iPads versus a MacBook Air, especially the M1, along with getting that larger screen and the built-in keyboard of the MacBook Air. And then if you're adding a keyboard and other accessories, a monitor to the iPad, and to really make that happen, you're getting probably even north of a MacBook Air. So why not just get a laptop? But the thing is, is that we have to keep in mind that some of our friends around here may not have easy access to these laptops or the price disparity is much larger um, between the two uh, in other countries. Not to mention, I love the M1, you know that I do, but my iPad Air is still my daily driver because I do use the M1s for a lot of testing and then of course, video editing. But otherwise, it's the iPad. And of course, not to mention that iPad OS and Mac OS, they really do seem to be overlapping as far as the functionality. Now I know it's not full functionality, I know not full operating system, but it's, I mean, it's getting there. I mean, it's what got me pulled back into iPad from the Gen 1. But you know, the chipsets, they're also like, if we're gonna be chasing benchmarks here, we're talking about very similar, if not the same chipsets that are in the M1 right now. So just keep that in mind that you can, do plenty of work on an iPad. It is very capable and I've done quite a few tests. Now, of course, full disclaimer that I did review Fledging's uh, Thunderbolt 3 enclosure that I paid for. Um, I've done a couple of those videos. I will link those up, but they decided to reach out, send me this Hubble to send me this whole kit. Nothing else was exchanged. And of course, here's the deal. As far as the testing is concerned, you yeah, know I've done that, but I've recorded and edited this video, and of course, yes, I've already seen it, but you were the first to see this video. So there's no input from fledging and nothing else has been provided. Now, of course, getting into the Hubble specs to, to really highlight here. Now, iPad Air 4, iPad Pro 2018, 2020 as of today, but Apple's uh, March event is actually coming soon. So we'll kind of see how that all goes, but it's USB-C. So it does have USB-C charging, USB-C for data transfer, five gigabits per second, and then HDMI and it's full HDMI at 4K, 60 Hertz refresh rate. And then the USB-A similar, you know, which is interesting, still five gigabits per second as far as the advertised uh, transfer on this. Now, SD card slots, yes, we've got them. Full SD card slot, micro SD card slot. I'm appreciative of that because I do a lot of editing on Photoshop and Lightroom on the iPad. So having the SD card slot already built in, ready to roll, and if I already have this connected, it's fantastic. And then of course, right here, the three and a half millimeter audio jack, which I really, I've tested it, it works, but I don't use it. Now, one of the things to keep in mind too is this travel switch. And so we'll kind of discuss that as far as the battery is concerned, because you need to flip this switch on uh, to turn it on or to uh, get the chips to be ready to be fired up when they're plugged in. But when it's charged up to 100%, and of course, fledging states that with no ports in use at idle, the drainage is about 1.7% uh, per hour. And while in airplane mode, so switched off in, into standby, the power sip is really more along the lines of 0.7% per hour. Now in my testing, I did find that getting it all the way to 100% and then unplugging it and keeping the, the switch on and then, but keeping it idle, nothing plugged in for about nine hours, I came back and the battery was at 83%. Now at idle with the airplane mode on, already plugged it in, charged it up to 100%. I went back after nine hours and it was at 94%. So it does, it, it really does seem to be on par with what they're advertising. Now, as far as the aluminum design, it does feel pretty premium, but it also does add some weight. 
898 grams total with it all together, about a pound 15 ounces. And of course the iPad Air itself is 458 grams or right at about a pound. So it does come with these three pieces, which include the main frame uh, that it actually fits inside to. Then there is the USB-C hub that is locked into place along with this uh, magnetic cover. So the cover is magnetic, just pops on, put it on top and it will put the iPad uh, to sleep as it does have that magnetic component. However, here's the thing, let's kind of, let's pull this apart. No editing here. So it does come with this plastic tool. It doesn't seem like much, but we have these clips on the sides to keep it locked in. And so pulling those out, so they're still attached to the frame and then you just pull the hub out itself. And of course, that's a nice little feature uh, to have because I know fledging probably, they're not advertising this and maybe they have or haven't tested it, but I have actually tested it. And what I decided to do was connect it just to the iPad Air uh, while it was sitting on the smart keyboard and it worked and it looked fine, but I also didn't have that peace of mind that it wasn't seated to the frame and that it wouldn't become, like it wouldn't get disconnected. Although I know that there are hubs out there that can get sort of ripped out or pulled out, but not advertised, but I did test it. Now, of course, yeah, no, I did some additional testing and this of course is what I found. Now, I wish iPad OS would really fix this functionality because you have no actual a status bar when you're transferring uh, footage, data, anything like that, but I did time them. So transferring using the OWC SSD, um, 68.92 uh, gigs of footage. And what I did was is I transferred it through the Hubble, through the USB-C, and I got four minutes and 43 seconds. Now for a direct transfer, just removing that hub, four minutes, 46 seconds and then the Hubble through USB type A, I actually got four minutes, 45 seconds. Because again, the type C and the type A as it's advertised, they're, they're both uh, the same uh, five gigabits per second. Now the temp on the Hubble, this is one of the things that I wanted to try out. So surface temps really kind of pushing the transfer, really kind of just working it for a while. 29.6 degrees Celsius and 85.3 Fahrenheit, again, on that surface after just continuing to use it. And of course, I gotta give props to having that SD card slot and did some transfers there because again, moving footage over for Photoshop or Lightroom, moving 26 gigs of footage via the SD card and the Hubble, four minutes, 58 seconds. And then I decided to connect the Hutu hub um, and do the transfer there as well. Four minutes, 56 seconds, really no difference, except for the fact that I just had a hub hanging off of the iPad, whereas I wouldn't as it's designed this way with the Hubble, so I definitely appreciate that. Now, as far as connecting the uh, the audio interface that I've often talked about, the, the Motu M2, and this actually worked just fine with the Hubble. It worked as fine as it would as if I had connected the Motu uh, directly. So whether you're plugging in a USB mic to record into GarageBand or Audacity, or whether you want to add in that, that interface to have multiple input sources, which I did a video on that and certainly recommend that for podcasting with multiple people on your iPad, but it actually seemed to just work fine uh, like on the hub, it didn't disconnect. And GarageBand allows you to record over just over an hour and I did run that test and it never disconnected. But as far as using it connected to uh, an HDMI monitor, it, that is where I really appreciate having this IO. And again, just really close to the iPad, locked in, ready to go. I love having that IO on the ready because although I, I typically will use, so behind me, I have my MX uh, Master 3 and MX keys, connecting that via Bluetooth and then even with my AirPods. So being able to use that, but then pivoting it, pivoting, like if I wanna leave that desk and then go over to my other desk where I have a wired keyboard, plugging that in to the USB type A port, it's really convenient to be able to actually do that. And of course, flipping back over to the HDMI connectivity, it's also nice if I actually want to move this to a television to get a much larger viewing experience. So something else that's that's nice to have. And then also for a little bit more testing, if I decided I wanted to go in for a little bit of Call of Duty, 
connecting it to my HDMI monitor, again, for the tests, um, that was also nice. The refresh rate is 60 Hertz and actually it's fine for my needs. However, it, it would be nice if I had the option to switch up the aspect ratio or adjust those display settings in iPad OS. It has nothing to do with the Hubble. Like that's not the problem. It is iPad OS and I really wish Apple would give us that functionality, but that's just sort of a, a, a thing. It's, it's like, I, I would put that in the comment box is Apple, please fix that. Now, as far as the build and protection of your iPad and the frame itself, it feels pretty well built. And as I said before, although there are some exposed areas here in the top and even on the sides, although it's nice to have your Apple Pencil connected, but just like the smart keyboard, it does have a little bit of that exposure, although the reinforced corners here and here, and that's the nice thing too, having the hub connected this way and locked in. So if it does fall, the hub's not gonna like snap off or pop off or anything like that. So I do think it really could take a punch, but some of that exposure may make some of you nervous. Just wanted to kind of bring that up. So with having my Bluetooth devices connected as well as filling up the ports on the Hubble, I didn't have anything disconnect or it, it really didn't fail on me like during that use. Although I know that, you know, likely rare for most of us, for, for many of you, you would probably just use a couple of ports at a time. Just, I wanted to let you know though, it, it is possible and advertised that you can fill all of these ports up. And based on my testing, it, it worked fine. But that's also based on, you know, looking at my workflow, probably thinking about your workflow and my use case, I was able to comfortably achieve my, my workflow with the Hubble connected and having a few of the peri peripherals connected throughout the day, including my Bluetooth devices, which again, pulls on that battery. So I was able to achieve that no problem. And, but if you, again, you wanna fill up all the ports and connect everything, it's advertised as working and I've tested it, it does work. And again, I completely understand that the Hubble, along with a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, you know, when you add in all of that, it can exceed the price of a laptop. But as I've always said, the, you know, all of those peripherals, all of that can be used in another setup. So the keyboard, the mouse, the display, as I currently do in my setup. Now I also realize that my setup is not your situation, but for me being able to switch between them in a pretty fluid fashion, it's actually really nice. So at the end of the day, again, if you already have the iPad Air, the Pro, and you're looking for a dock, you're looking for this type of functionality, I really, I, I can't find a flaw except for maybe just, you know, having this already locked in, having a, a bit of that chin, maybe some of the aesthetics, but it really comes down to the functionality for me. And so having this all in one, and then even being able to, again, not advertise, but just pulling the hub off, and just connecting it to the iPad, you know, with the smart keyboard, that's also nice as well. What questions do you have for me? You know where to find me. Hit me up on Twitter or YouTube. These are the places that I am the most. You go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking the faces. I'm gonna keep creating value for you here. So you go do the things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.